Well, 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 what's up, my friends? Bam, bam. We have survived the total solar apocalypse. Isn't it funny that it's called eclipse and apocalypse? Uh, those two words uh, have the same ending. Eclipse and apocalypse. Well, what's up, friends? It's Dr. B. Lim right here from uh, uh, Hawaii. Aloha to you. And uh, very happy to see you. I'm going to talk to you about some things. Just catch up with you. See how y'all are doing. You wonderful, beautiful people. Amen. Give us some hearts and likes. Let me know where you're watching from. It's Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, one of your favorite prophetic voices. And I believe that uh, the Lord's going to speak today. And as well, uh, we're just going to have some fun at the same time. Amen. Thank you. Uh, my hair does look good. I'm quite happy. The last barber really messed up my hair. And then I'm getting restored or getting it back in shape. You dig? What's up? What's up, friends? Let me know where you're watching from. Comment below where you're watching from. And um, let me know. Did you see the eclipse? Were you able to see the eclipse today? Um, I know on my Facebook feed, on my personal Facebook feed, many people were saying that, uh, you know, or they posted photos, they posted videos, they're sharing different photos. I'm here in Hawaii. So I did not see a thing. Okay. All I saw was a beautiful ocean. <laughs> so me being here in Hawaii, uh, the eclipse did not even come near us here in Hawaii. So uh, it's all good for me because I'm just chilling in the Holy Ghost. But I want to talk to you about some things. Um, what's next prophetically? What is next prophetically? And as well, um, I guess we're not raptured, huh? If, if we're still here, if you and I were still here, are we left behind? Did we do something wrong? Am I left behind? Are we? Why didn't I get raptured today, right? LOL. But anyways, I want to talk to you all uh, because there is something serious coming up. Something serious. Of course, if you've been following me, you know that I've been talking about <clears throat> these earthquakes and these natural disasters and these phenomenons that's going to happen, build up towards April 8th and then even after April 8th. So even after today, uh, there's going to be a number of things taking place, even in this month of April, because we are actually... First and foremost, we are in the new year Hebraically right now. We are now in the first day, the first month of the year called Nisan. So Rosh Kodesh Nisan, as the Hebrews say. So we are now in a new Hebrew month of Nisan. And so now that we are in the new Hebrew month of Nisan, oh, I feel the Lord. Uh, we are stepping into... The ten judgments against it, uh, against Egypt. We're stepping into the freedom and the liberation of the Israelites from bondage, from slavery, being in Egypt for over three hundred plus years. So now there's salvation, freedom, deliverance coming, but at the same time, there's judgments against Egypt, and there is a letting go of my people, a letting go of the people of God, of the children of God. So, Rosh Kodesh, Nisan, all right, Hag Sameach, we're now in the new Hebrew month as of now, of Nisan. And uh, this is the month of the great Exodus. I want you to comment Exodus. This is the month of the great Exodus, where God is cleansing the leaven from the church, cleansing the leaven from our hearts, our minds, cleansing the leaven uh, of Egypt, the filth, the dirt, the residue, the leftover, the left behind. God is, is cleansing out the leaven of yesterday. Amen. And uh, so this is a very important month, a very strategic month. And you need to hear me now because from today, all right, from April and on all the way to October, November. Okay, Let, let's just see where, where this is. Thank you, Lord. October all the way to November, we are going to experience six months of radical shaking and awakening. Six months of radical shaking and awakening. 
from the month of April all the way to November. Six months of radical shalom. Why? Because now this is the month of Passover. And then after Passover, now you have Pentecost, Shavuot. Then after Shavuot, now you have a three-month season in preparation to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. The most holy uh, uh, day of the whole year. Korabah. And then from there, you have, of course, the Feast of Tabernacles. So we are in a six-month window all the way up to the elections here in the United States. Now, I know some people are saying, oh, you know, uh, America is not in the Bible or America is the whore of Babylon or America this and that. But, you know, uh, statistically, logistically and literally, as America goes, so goes the world. Because even America stands with Israel is a determining factor in these end times. Because he who blesses Israel will be blessed. And they who curse Israel will be cursed. So we must stand with Israel. We must stand with the people of God. And obviously, there's a lot going on with the red heifer, allegedly, uh, that's taken place. I'll just be honest. I don't know too much about that. But I know all of the end times uh, prophetic teachers and scholars and scholastic nerds are going haywire because they're saying this is prophesied and this is coming closer to the creation of the third temple <clears throat> excuse me that will usher in the second coming of the lord jesus christ uh so things are ramping up things are amping up things are speeding up amen but uh i think it's very interesting because something is about to take place and listen y'all Help me to build the room. Help me to build the room. And uh, my gosh, because something unusual is going to be taking place in America. Now, y'all get ready for this, friends. Y'all get ready. It's just like, it just doesn't stop. And it's just one after another, another phenomenon, another sign and wonder, another sign of judgment, yet of God's beauty and glory. Another sign of judgment against Israel, yet it's a sign of the release of God's power and God's mercy and protection over his chosen people. Amen. So we are living in such unusual times. So I want to share some things with you very quickly. But uh, before we go into that, help me to build up the room and just let me know where you're watching from. Give us some hearts and likes. Did you see the solar eclipse? Comment below. If you saw the solar eclipse or not, or if you don't give a flying flip, if you don't care. All right. Just comment below. Let me know your thoughts there and your share because I'm going to begin to share something that's very important. Very important. Now, you know, prophetically in the last week, then the last two weeks, I've already been talking about up to April 8th and then after April 8th, we must be ready. We must be prayerful. We must be on guard. Because there's going to be greater shakings, greater testings, calamities, even after the lunar eclipse. Now, it's not an accident that all these things are taking place. Today, April 8th. It's not a cause. And today, April 8th, the day of the total solar eclipse over America. Today is the first day of the new Hebrew month of Nisan or the new Hebrew year which begins the exodus, the freedom from Egypt, the birthing of the great state, the people of God of Israel. Amen. So there's all these signs that are coming into alignment, but I really do believe that the next three months, we need to be prayerful and watchful. Now remember, for the prophetic word for April, which I released on March 27th. I shared a vision that the Lord gave me and I saw in the spirit of vision, a very dark, like a dark cloud, a spell, an incantation, pharmacaea sickness. I saw like a swarm, a spray, a mist coming out. Who remembers 
that I talked about. I've been talking about it repeatedly. And of course now they're talking about a bird flu. A bird flu that's coming out and therefore the largest egg distribution center in America has been halted. Because of this bird flu, it's coming from chickens, allegedly, okay? So this bird flu, which is the new Corona Bologna, they're saying this bird flu is 100 times stronger than COVID-19. Now, does it sound familiar or not? Because 2020 was an election year, and beginning of quarter of 2020, that was when COVID took place. And now here we are, 2024, another election year, the first quarter of 2024, boom, now they're stirring up, conjuring up this bird flu. Allegedly, the first cases of the bird flu was found March 25th, okay? Now, as you're jumping in, I need you to pray in the spirit. Help me to finish this and to release my thoughts and this word tonight. Can I get an amen? Give us some hearts and likes in the mighty name of Jesus. So now they have this bird flu that they're planning of course, because it's an election year. But more than that, something so horrendously unusual is taking place in America. Now, once again, I declared and I prophesied the next three months after April 8th, we must be on guard and we must be prayerful because there's going to be more attacks, more bridges falling, more of the transportation crisis Pilots dying, passing, airplanes falling, things falling from the sky. So many unusual signs, okay? Like there's going to be pre uh, reper repercussions, consequences from what the WEF, what NASA, from what all these government agencies are doing. There's going to be repercussions. But before I share my main thoughts for tonight's broadcast, before I go into that, I just want to speak clearly I know maybe the last week I've been sounding a little, you know, haywire. I've been sounding a little uh, too alarmist, alertist, or, you know, maybe in the last week on my page here, I've been sounding a little too something, right? And I just want to let you know, I'm not an end times theologian. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm personally not really focused on eschatology. Some people believe that eschatology or studying end times prophecy is actually the highest form of the prophetic or it's the highest level of being studious in the realm of the prophetic. So some people actually believe end times prophecy eschatology is the highest level of the realm of the prophetic, okay? Because all prophecy leads to that. Well, I wanna say all prophecy actually leads to Jesus, not the end times or our opinion or our thoughts of how uh, the end of times will take place or what it will look at, look like, okay? So for me, I know the last week or so, uh, you know, this page, it's been, you know, again, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I like to be educated and informed. And I'm an intercessor and I'm a man of God and I got the Holy Ghost, amen? And I'm a prophetic voice. So obviously there's coincidences, there's things happening all around that the body of Christ must not be fooled about, that we must not be tricked about, that we must not be living in a little Christian church bubble of comfort where we're not engaged and actively participating with God's plans and purposes and praying and interceding raising up walls of prayer and fire and intercession because we, the church, we must take our place. Can I get an amen? And like I preached in the church yesterday here in Kona, Hawaii, I preached, I said, all these things going on, it's our fault, all right? The world falling apart, all these things. It's not the government, it's not the education, it's not the media, it's not this party or that party, it's our fault as a church. Because we as a church, we have failed to rise up and to take our place, our seat of authority. Can I get an amen? So I just want to make a public disclaimer. Like I'm not, you know, into all that end times conspiratist, uh, fear mongering narrative. This is a page that glorifies Jesus Christ 
and we honor and love the prophetic and the word of God. And we preach to see souls saved. And we want to see you, the body equipped. Can I get amen? So I want to get the public disclaimer out. So the main thing I want to talk about tonight or today, wherever you're watching from, just give us some hearts and likes and build the room. The main thing I want to talk about, it's so interesting because now in the middle of April, in the middle of this month, there's something that's taken place <laughs> called the Cicada Geddon. Okay, the Cicada Geddon. I want you to, I'm going to, I'm going to comment it and I'm going to pin it here. There's something happening this month called the Cicada Geddon. And folks, you cannot make this stuff up. Okay, you cannot make this stuff up. It is hilarious. Like I said earlier, it's like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen again? Every day, there's something new. What the heck are these globalists, elitists, demonic, cabalists that are trying to conjure up the end times and with their spells and hex vex with their witchcraft? What are these? It just doesn't get old. It's just like over and over and over again. And that really is one of the plots and plans of the enemy, which is to get us so distracted and so drained mentally, emotionally, spiritually that they catch us off guard so that they will have victory and literally deplete and delete and destroy the church. All right, does that make sense? But again, we must be informed, educated, and we must increase in the glory and the presence of God and have authority over the plans, plots, tactics of the enemy. If you're with me today, say amen, give us some hearts and likes. So in the middle of April, there's something happening in America. Hilarious. Hilarious. And again, I, I'm a man of God in America. I stand in the United States, but also, of course, in the nations. But what's going on here? There's something called the cicada getting. Cicada. Now, what is a cicada? Now, listen, I don't know about you, but I hate bugs. I'm not going to eat bugs. W-E-F. You one world order. You liberal Hollywood actors, elitists. I'm not going to eat those bugs. Are you kidding me? They want you to eat bugs. They literally want you to eat human beings. They want you to become cannibalistic. And they want you to eat lab-grown meat. The devil is a liar. First, it started with veganism. And have you ever realized that those veganists are in a crazy occult? And whenever you confront that spirit, something manifests out of their spirit, man, right? Because it's a demonic agenda. But the cicadas are like this grasshopper, locust-looking creature. Now, listen, friends, this is weird, scary stuff. Once again, I don't like bugs, okay? I don't like bugs. I love the outdoors. I don't like bugs. I don't do bugs. I don't like bugs. I hate mosquitoes. I hate flies. I hate cockroaches. I hate big bugs, small bugs, all bugs. I hate bugs. I rebuke you. Go back to the pit of hell. I am 100% sure that these bugs have Nephilim seed and Nephilim blood in them. Some of them, they actually probably do. I'm not even kidding. Uh, seriously, some bugs, they look like demonic creatures from the underworld, all right? Is anybody jiving with me? Is anybody with me today, right? You agree, amen. But this cicada, this cicada is like a large fly, locust-looking Bug. Now, this is going to be a trip, y'all. This is going to be a trip. Now, I just saw on the news today, they're saying middle of April, the cicada get in. Some people are calling it the cicada apocalypse. Isn't this a, you cannot make this up. So what's happening is these bugs called cicadas, there's going to be trillions of them. Like, how much trillions of dollars we've been giving away to Ukraine. There's going to be trillions. I've lived in Australia for three months. I know it's a scary thing. Those spiders. Oh my gosh. I can't even deal with that. But there's going to be trillions of cicadas that are going to swarm America. So unusual sign. People are got to hear me. Unusual sign. Unusual sign right after April 8th. Now, in the next week or two, some cities and states are going to start seeing these swarms, these broods of these cicadas. 
and they're calling it the cicada Geddon or the cicada apocalypse. And they're saying it may last two to three months. So they're calling it a summer phenomenon. A summer phenomenon. Now, now check this out, okay? I'm just gonna, <laughs> they're saying, yes, of course, cicadas are around, but a swarm like this, a swarm like this has not manifested or come forth in America in the years, okay? They're saying that there's two breeds of cicadas. Now, this is very interesting. I want you to hear this. There's two breeds of cicadas. And they're saying for the first time in 200 years. First time in 200 years. 200 years, y'all. Think about that. The last time, allegedly, these two different breeds of cicadas or two breeds of cicadas. The last time two breeds of these locusts. These insect creatures came together in the United States like this was 1803. Ha <laughs> ha, 1803. My, my, my. 1803, so it's been more than 200 years where two broods breeds, and hear me now, this is where it gets interesting. One is called Brood XIX, and that brood is known as the Great Southern Brood. Okay, this cicada breed is called the Great Southern Breed. And brood X triple I, or one, whatever it's called, known as the Northern Illinois breed. And it will emerge from the ground simultaneously. Now, this is a trip because one breed has not been around for 13 years. The other breed hasn't been around for 17 years. But two breeds coming together at the same time has not happened in 200 years. Since 1803 in the United States. Some, somebody say, preach, Dr. Ben. Now, this is where it gets really weird and really interesting. Because it's going to cover, and th this is where it's so interesting. It's going to cover most of the areas. Hear me now. It's covering most of the areas where the total solar eclipse path was. Now, after this broadcast, you do your own research. But this swarm, this brood of cicada Geddon is going to be covering most of the path where the solar eclipse was today. Is that interesting? I think not. Um, these two names, the Great Southern Brood and the Northern Illinois Brood. I'm telling you, Chicago, y'all better wake up, y'all. This, I... I'm going to Chicago end of May. I don't know if I want to go anymore. Jesus, help me. I need a flamethrower. I need some angels of fire to burn these swarms of locusts. You're not getting near me. You're not getting near my car in Jesus' name. You're not getting near my hair, this nice-looking Korean face in the name of Jesus. So these cicadas, this brood is called the Great Southern Brood and the Northern Illinois Brood. Now, this is very interesting because it's going to cover about a dozen states in America. It's going to cover about a dozen states in America, from Maryland to Oklahoma, Illinois, Alabama, and Georgia. I think it's very interesting that it's two breeds coming together. To me, it almost seems and looks like the North and the South. It almost feels like a civil war of some sort. Now, this is very interesting because something like this hasn't happened since 1803. And people are calling it a once-in-a-lifetime cicada emergence. I don't know how some people like bugs or study these things. I, Jesus, get a real hobby, please. Shaka Baba, get a real hobby. But these cicadas are annoying and ugly. Allegedly, they don't bite. Okay, allegedly, they're not poisonous. But this is what, what I need you to hear. Allegedly, these cicadas do not bite. Do not, they're not poisonous or they don't have venom. But who knows what these lab-grown bugs are going to do? Who knows what these demonic, disgusting, lab-grown, evil intention 
bugs are going to do or about to do. Now, listen to me, guys. They have these cries and it's annoying as heck. They have these cries. And so all around, you're going to be hearing the annoying cry of these cicadas. Now, what's interesting, I'm here in Hawaii and there's a lot of frogs around. It's a beautiful sound. They call them uh, the koki frogs, koki. Because you hear these frogs and like, koki, koki, koki. Yeah, you want me to do that again? Koki, koki, koki. I didn't say koki, I said koki. So I'm here in Hawaii and there's all these koki frogs around and so you could hear them at night. Imagine, hear me, if there's going to be trillions of these fly locust cicadas, imagine the mess, the residue, and imagine the creatures, predators that are about to come out in the food chain of the cicadas. All right, you hear me? I want you to think about the food chain. I want you to think about the food chain that it's going to bring out. All right, there's trillions of cicadas, first and foremost. Okay, that's one thing. But now, what creatures are going to abound or come out through these cicadas being around? What creatures? All right, more, uh, more spiders, maybe more frogs. Um, mice, rats, raccoons. It's a chain of events. It's a chain of events that's going to take place. This is not the end. These trillions of cicadas, they're calling it the cicada apocalypse, the cicada get it. During this summer, my friends, during this summer, Imagine what's going to happen from mid-April. They're saying you're going to start seeing mid-April. My gosh. As soon as next week, the states, the city line where the solar eclipse has gone through, there's going to be a swarm, swarms of cicadas. And you're going to hear their annoying cries, splat, splat, unending Hopefully they don't get in your car. They don't get in your hair. Hopefully they don't get in your house. Are you hearing me today? I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Give us some heart to life. You're covered by the blood of Jesus. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> these creatures, these demonic bugs, they cannot come forth and come near and touch me in the name of Jesus. Come on. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Now, is this a coincidence? I want you to think about that. Is this a coincidence that these cicadas, the cicada again and cicada apocalypse, there was just a massive phenomenon with the total solar eclipse today. And now this cicada apocalypse. Friends, something isn't lining up. Something isn't making sense. There is something that is building in the spirit. And there is an unraveling of sorts of possible judgment, <clears throat> of an awakening that's taken place. They're calling this a once in a lifetime Zakata emergence. Now, allegedly, <laughs> when you start hearing these Zakatas cry, 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 when you start hearing the sound of these cicadas, allegedly it's the males that are calling for the females. They're competing to mate with the females. Don't be getting these little, uh, these little cicada eggs all up in your stuff. The devil is a liar. Don't be getting these, these cicada mating eggs all over you. I bind it in Jesus' name. My gosh. All right. So let's talk about this. This is the Exodus month. This is the month of Passover. This is the month of Passover. Look at that. See, Ohio ha has mayflies up by Lake Erie that swarms. It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Absolutely. There's an agenda behind this. There's, this is spiritual warfare, friends. This spiritual warfare, because we have to look at this. Follow me here. 
Follow me here. This is Passover month. April is Passover month. And in this month of April, there is these swarms of cicadas that's going to pop up and manifest. I know it's hilarious, isn't it? it it's, so, it's so stupid, it's funny. It's so ridiculous, it's hilarious. But there's these swarms of cicadas coming up this month, and it's Passover month. Now, look at this verse here. I don't know who keeps giving me angry faces. Um, the locusts came up over all the land of Egypt and settled on the whole country of Egypt. Such a dense swarm of locusts as had never been seen before, nor will ever be again. Now, I want you to think about that. Locusts, I don't care how much of a weird fetish or fantasy you have with these cicadas, you weird scientists, researchers, get a life, please. But a sign of the swarms of locusts, this is not a good thing. This is actually a curse. This is actually, it can be actually a sign of judgment. It can actually be a curse. And we see spiritually that the locusts stand for a devouring creature. Where the locusts begin to devour your substance, your sustenance, your crops, your harvest, your agriculture. So we're in a season right now of Passover where these locust zacadas are being released by trillions. And from where? How so? Why? Why? How? Where are they coming from? What, what lab? Is another Wuhan lab laboratory from Wuhan that's coming forth. So I'm telling you, this is a manipulative witchcraft sign spell to destroy the harvest, to choke up the atmosphere. So I think this is very unusual because the locust is a curse. It's a sign of judgment and curses. Okay. Now, let's go to another verse here, Revelation 9.3. If you're with me today, say amen. Revelation 9.3. And out of the smoke, locusts descended on the earth. And they were given power like that of scorpions on the earth. Now, of course, there's the book of Revelation, end times eschatology. But you see, these locusts had venom and poison like the scorpions of the earth. So in the end times, there's going to be a certain breed of locusts that will be so venomous, so powerful, that it could kill human beings. This venom, this poison, this spirit of death, these locusts, are these, these cicadas. What's going on with these cicadas? What's going to happen with the swarm of trillions of cicadas that's going to overtake, overwhelm America. Are you with me today? Are you catching my drift? Deuteronomy 28 verse 38. And of course, Deuteronomy 28 is the chapter of obedience and disobedience of blessings and curses. All right. There are literal, absolute blessings that you can expect when you obey. And when you disobey, there's a list of curses. In the Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 28. So here the Bible says, you will sow much seed in the field, but harvest little, because the locusts will consume it. Friends, we need to be ready. We need to sound the alarm. We need to be in prayer. We need to cover our food, our fields, our harvests, our crops, our farmland. Come on, even now, we release the host of heaven. We release the angels of God to cover the lands of believers, cover the lands, the properties, the agriculture of your children. We release the host of heaven to release force, force fields and shields and to block and blot out this demonic intrusion of these locusts. You will sow much seed 
in the field, but harvest little. I want to declare over you, your days of harvesting little is over. Your days of harvesting little is over. Because the locust is being rebuked. The devourer is being rebuked. Because the Lord is pushing back the devourer and the locust of the earth. And last verse I want to share today. Jesus. <laughs> Rabasa. Psalm 78, verse 46. He gave their crops to the grasshopper, the fruit of their labor to the locust. This is what happens when a nation is in rebellion and disobedience to God. God gives our crops, our food, our agriculture, our harvest, our substance sustenance. God gives them away to the grasshopper and to the locust. My friends, I want you to think about this. This swarm of the zakata Geddon, these swarms of trillions of zakatas that's going to begin to take place next week, mid-April, across America. What, it's, I think it said, uh, how many states here? It's going to take in about 12 to 13 states in the U.S. These states are literally the Midwest states. Hear me. This is the Midwest states, the South and the Midwest states, where we need the land and the agriculture and the harvest to feed America and the world. So this attack and this intrusion is strategic and it's all planned. And we need to plead the blood of Jesus. Because in these days, in this month of Passover, in this month of Exodus, my friends, the enemy is allowing some weird, unusual sign phenomenon of the Zacchaeus to manifest. And they're calling it the Zacchaeus Geddon. But as for me and my house, we'll be covered. Come on, we plead the blood of Jesus. We push back the forces of darkness and the forces of hell. And no locust will come near or touch our harvest. Now, as I close, I want to talk about this. Number one, there's going to be a literal swarm of locusts or bug creatures called zacatas. Number one, literal. That is frantic, frightening, and stressful enough. A literal swarm of zacatas, trillions, are going to cover 12, 13 states in the United States starting next week. This is the aftermath, overflow, consequential result of this total solar eclipse. So number one, there's going to be literal swarms of zacatas. Number two, this is a prophetic picture. Hear me now. This is a prophetic picture of your finances, your destiny, and your harvest being attacked. How many of you under Bidenomics, how many of you in the last few years, you've been struggling? You, you, you almost threw in the towel. You almost, uh, you know, filed for bankruptcy. You are in debt. You're in major debt. And how many of you, there's been an attack on your finances, destiny, and harvest? These Akedas are a spiritual supernatural sign, I believe, in the spirit of a curse against your future and against the field, the crops, the harvest of your life. But you must understand that God is removing it over you. God is removing these objects of opposition. He is removing these locusts, these grasshoppers, these swarms of flies. He is removing these things to not even come near nor to touch. Your future, your harvest, your crops, your bounty, your plunder, your finances. In Jesus' name. If you believe that, say amen. He will rebuke the devourer. And then number three. The third thing we must realize. Number one, there is an actual swarm of trillions of zakata, bugs, flies, grasshoppers. 
Beelzebub, y'all. Beelzebub, the Lord of the Flies. Hello there. There are trillions of this Beelzebub manifestation that's going to take place in the next few months over the United States. Number two, this is a spiritual sign, symbolic resembling of your finances. Come on, if you're with me today, say amen. Where are y'all at right now? Y'all sleeping. Come on, get engaged, receive this today in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, y'all sleeping on me today. Rabba sata rabo soto. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I guess Facebook is lagging. Of course it is. But your harvest, your finances, your future, your destiny will be secured, number two. And in number three, this zakeda, it can stand for a curse or judgment. But this curse and judgment will pass you by. It will pass over you if you're covered with the blood of Jesus. It will pass over you. It will not touch you. It will not come near you. Come on, you're overflowing in the blessing of God. You're overflowing in the goodness and the glory of God. That curse and that judgment is not going to affect you because of your personal obedience. Because of your decision making to worship, to love, to honor the Lord. Because you have stood in that place of righteousness. And said, I'm going to do what's right no matter what. Remember friends. The children of God were in a beautiful land called Goshen. And they were protected from the swarm of locusts. You will be protected from the devourer. From the locusts. From the curse of the earth eating zakatas, you will be protected. Your harvest, your health, your family, your finances, your destiny in the name of Jesus. So I believe these are three things that this zakata get and zakata apocalypse we need to be aware of. Friends, there's going to be more unusual things happening. More and more unusual things happening. Like I said, if there's going to be trillions of zakatas, these fly, bug, grasshopper looking creatures in America, bang, bang, is this a coincidence? Does this now look like a chapter straight out of Exodus, especially during this Passover season and month? There's going to be a chain of events or a food chain because where there's zakatas, there's going to be predators. Mice, rats, raccoons, cats, frogs. And if there's going to be all these creatures, then the larger creatures may start showing up. It's a food chain or a chain of events. And I believe that this is all a setup. This is all a demonic setup. But it's also part of the purging. It's also part of the curse and the judgment. Friends, if you have survived the total solar eclipse and if you have not yet been raptured like me, hey, I guess I'm left behind or what's going on today, folks. <laughs> but if you and I were still here, it means God has a plan and a purpose for our lives which is to see the greatest move of God, the greatest harvest of souls, and is to see the glory of God shine like never before. God's not done with America. God's not done with you. He's not done with the nations of the earth. Amen. The Lord is moving. He's seated on the throne. And this bills above spirit is being bound and destroyed. But... These 12, 13 states where the Zakata Geddon is affecting. It's some of the swing states of America. Think about that. It's the, some of the swing states of America. Illinois. Georgia. What? Oklahoma. Where's the list of swing states here? So there's something strategic that the enemy's doing. But we know that God's on the throne. Can I get an amen? Lift, lift up your hands, friends. I want you to just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. 
We release fire right now in Jesus' name. We release fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, I want to say fire. Come on, I want to say I'm protected. I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb of God. Amen, amen, and amen. Shara brande arabrasa tarabrata ta rabata rababa sota. Thank you, Jesus. Now, friends, this weekend I'm going to be ministering in Dallas, Texas. So, if y'all are in the Texas area or the Dallas region. Please come and see me. Uh, I have great expectation for what God's going to do this weekend in Dallas. So if you're in the Texas region or around Dallas, greater Fort Worth, uh, come and see me, friends. Uh, as of now, it's the only time I'm scheduled to be in Texas all year. So come and see me. I would love to see you, meet you, shake your hand, pray with you. So if you're in the Dallas, Texas region, Come and see me. Amen. If you're in the Texas region, I want you to come and I am. But also, I want you to sign up for a free Zoom webinar. I'm going to talk extensively on Passover miracles. Friends, as crazy as everything is right now, this is a season of miracles. It's a season of breakthrough where God is splitting the Red Sea in two. He's delivering you from the Pharaoh spirit. He's delivering you from Egypt. So in midst of all these weird, unusual signs taking place, this is a time and season of Passover miracles. So I want you to join on April, on Monday, April uh, 15th, actually, actually next week, April 15th, I am ministering in a private Zoom group on Passover miracles. If you want to learn more about Passover, get ready, get prepared to receive the fullness of God's revelation and promise and blessings, then I want you to join, all right? And uh, I've clicked the way to register and to join. And if you're interested in joining our Zoom webinar, or if you are joining, I want you to comment interested or comment joining, amen? Wonderful, Juan Martinez, I can't wait to see you guys again. Praise God in Dallas, Texas. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, this Akeda Geddon is from the pit of hell. It's that spirit of bills above that's manifesting. But we rebuke it in Jesus' name. Well, friends, I love you all. Thanks for watching. Share, share, share. And uh, I, aren't you glad that you're still alive after this total solar eclipse day, April 8th? Happy Rosh Kodesh Nisan. It's a new Hebrew month. Happy Nisan. And uh, I'll see you all soon. God bless.